Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 49 of Screw the Commute podcast. Today, we're going to talk about repurposing. In this episode, I'm going to show you a whole boatload of ways to sell your knowledge. Now, I hope you didn't miss episode 48 with Joel Calm. He's a New York Times bestselling author who has literally created a happiness-based lifestyle business. His days are his own, and just for fun, and to learn about a topic, he started a podcast about it, and it's opened doors all over the world. So go back later and check out episode 48, Joel Kahn. All right, today's sponsor is AmazingPublicSpeaking.com. This is a membership site with over 475 pro and public speaking training videos, plus audios and articles. We also have a corresponding complimentary webinar, 30 speaking tips in 37.625 minutes. All right. We'll have a link to that in the show notes at screwthecommute.com slash 49. This is episode 49. All right, let's get to the main event. Repurposing, how to sell your knowledge in 19 different ways. So why this topic? I want you to maximize your sales from every piece of knowledge you own or that you can create or even have somebody else create for you. I'm going to show you how to take your knowledge and format it and sell it in many, many, many different ways. So let's get this really clear. You have a piece of content. It could be an ebook, a video, an audio, a webinar, whatever it is. And the point of this episode is to show you all the different formats you could convert that piece of content to so that you maximize the revenue from it. You see, people have different preferences. I mean, if you like to listen to stuff, and all I have is an ebook or a webinar, well, I've most likely lost you, and, and a great percentage of people like you. And if all you have is audio, and I like to read, well, there you go. It's the same thing. You lost me. So let's jump right in to showing you all the things you could be doing. Oh, and one more thing. You don't have to do all of these things, all right? You only do the ones that make sense for your audience. For instance, if if I were doing something for senior citizens, I probably wouldn't worry about doing some fancy e-course. And that leads me to our first format, email e-courses. The first thing is, and this is one of the easiest products on earth to create, is an e-course. And, and this is an e-course via email. Remember, we're talking about taking knowledge of yours and repurposing it in many different formats. And the first one is an email course uh, or an e course via email. So we always use plain text for these because email delivery is tough nowadays. And HTML emails, those are the fancy ones with graphics, get a big negative in the spam filter. So, so you just use plain text, very easy. Now, anybody listening to this could sit down for a couple hours, take their topic. Break it down into five, maybe, or seven parts. Make five or seven emails and put into what we call a sequential autoresponder. This is something that will deliver it automatically each day or every couple of days or once a week, whatever you set up. Of course, we use kickstartcart.com, the shopping cart system I use and promote. And by the way, I did a complete training session on shopping cart systems in episode 10. So go back and check that one out later. To create an e-course, you just break your topic into its logical parts, similar to chapters in a book. For instance, if I was going to do an e-course on temps, well, I would do one email on serve, one on forehand, one on backhand, volley, overhead, and all, you know, all the stuff, all the parts of tennis. So that's how you develop the course. Break it down into logical parts. Now, here's just something I just thought of. At the, at the end of each part of the course, give them a teaser of what's coming up in the next part so they're watching for it. All right. Now, these 
plain text e-courses uh, or e-courses via email can either be paid or free. I know one guy, he's got like a $1,500 e-course. And he originally developed it because he wanted to pay cash for a new BMW. <laughs> and he did. Now, I haven't checked lately if it's still running, but for years he ran this very expensive e-course. And you can do the same thing. My first e-course brought in about $7,000 the first week, and it was a free e-course. And now you got to say, well, how is that? How, how, how can that happen? Well, here's a really good point for you. I want you to make sure that each piece of your e-course has something that they can buy. So 90% of it's good information that you promised them, and 10% or less is something they can buy. And that's in each email. Don't wait till the end of the course. At the bottom of each email, I just said, hey, if you're really serious about this, here, you can buy this CD for $200, and it's going to tell you everything you need to know. Well, $7,000 in the first week from that free e-course. And that e-course is still running today, although I've updated quite a bit over the years. So e-course via email is your first format, and all of these formats are in no particular order, just whatever makes sense for you. Okay, on this first one, I'm going to immediately take a sidebar and tell you the modern way to deliver an email e-course. See, the problem is, is that email delivery is down, and it's harder and harder to get emails through spam filters and commercial email filters like Gmail has. The longer the email is, the harder it is to get through because innocent word combinations to you can set off spam filters, and it makes them think it's spam, and then the person doesn't get a part of your e-course. Now, in the beginning when I used to do this, I never got any complaints. They, they would always get all seven pieces of my e-course. As the years went by and the spam filters got tougher, people would complain they didn't get every piece of the e-course. And it was a big hassle because I got pretty large numbers of people in my database. So I had to stop everything and go and find the piece they're missing and copy it and paste it. It was just a big hassle. So, so I devised a way to get rid of that problem. You want to pay attention to this is what I want you to do. I do want you to have your e-course as five or seven separate pieces. I mean, separate pieces delivered per day or per week, whatever. And here's a sidebar on the sidebar. All right? If it's a free e-course, deliver it once per day. I mean, get them while they're hot. If it's an expensive paid e-course, maybe they need time to work on things, then maybe you deliver only once a week, whatever, you, whatever suits you. Now, back to the way to get out of the hassle of people missing parts of the e-course. What I want you to do is put the entire course in one file and convert it to a PDF file. Then, in each piece of your course, or each email, I want you to say, right at the top, for those of you that missed a piece of the course, or if you're just too impatient and you want the whole thing, click here and you can download the entire course. <laughs> I'll tell you what, as soon as I did this, and this was probably seven or eight years ago when I first needed to do this, not once. I mean, I can't remember one in the last seven or eight years where I've had to respond to somebody not getting a piece of my e-course. I mean, you can put the whole thing in a PDF file and put it in each part of the course, and that way you don't have to fool around with people that missed a piece. All right, next is another way. Uh, to combat poor email delivery, and this is our next format, is an e-course on the web. Now, there's two ways to do this. Well, one of them involves sending an email again, but you would send a short email. See, short emails get through the spam filters easier. That's a good thing. You put a link to where they take the course or one part of your course on your website. Hey, it gets them to go to your website to take a piece of the course, and each piece of your course could be on a hidden page on your website. In other words, there's no links to it anywhere. It's just uh, the only way people know about it is if they're taking your e-course. 
and each page would have some weird URL or address so nobody could guess guess it. And then uh, what happens is you give them the first part of the e-course and they click over to take it on your website. And while they're at your website, hey, you can show them all your other stuff. I mean, it's much easier when they're at your website to promote your other products and services. Then they get the second part of the e-course through email and they click over to part two on a hidden page on your website and so forth. The other way to do it is to simply let them go from page to page to page and take it all at once. But they're on your website the entire time. You don't have to do any email here. If you have a significant number of visitors to your website, you could just promote it on your home page and people start going through the course. Also, when you have your course on your web page, you don't have to worry about its length or any potential spam words in it. It's not email, so spam is irrelevant. So that's an e-course on the web. All right, the next kind, let's ramp it up a little bit, is an audio e-course. This is where they would get a short email with a link to a hidden page that has an audio file on it, and that they can either listen on your website or download to their smartphone or tablet. Now, we're going to talk about audio uh, a little bit more in depth later. So, but anyway, that's an audio e-course. Let's ramp it up again to a video e-course. You can use either regular video uh, of you teaching something, or you can use screen capture video, which we're going to address uh, again later. But the same thing, your videos are on hidden pages in your website. And these hidden pages that I'm talking about, you could secure them and make them password protected if you wanted. However, I got to tell you, sometimes just because you can do stuff doesn't mean it's worth the trouble. See, in many of these cases, I mean, especially if they're free e-courses, if somebody does trip over it accidentally, you're still further ahead because they found you. And maybe you didn't get their email address, but at least they found the video and they may watch it and become a customer. Now, if they're paid videos and they're really very expensive ones, well, maybe you do want to secure the pages. But in most cases, I don't bother because they're not easily found either. So, so anyway, that's a video e-course. All right, now this next one is just the same type of course as a video e-course. It's just, we're calling it a video course because it's just delivered all at one time and it is possibly protected behind membership software. So I have some video courses that are simply on hidden pages of one of my websites. And I frequently combine them with a PDF synopsis of what the videos teach. An example of one that's locked up is copywriting901.com, where I go in depth on the most important business skill I've ever acquired in 40 plus years of business. Now, I, co I covered copywriting in episode 13, so if you really don't want to miss that one, and, and uh, I have an even more in-depth webinar on it at tomantionwebinars.com, and that's got all the visuals and stuff in it. So we'll have all this stuff in the show notes. This is episode 49. So it would be screwthecommute.com slash 49 unless we have the Screw the Commute app done whenever you hear this. And then you can just pop to the show notes directly from the app on your phone or tablet. All right, now let's talk about Camtasia Video. Camtasia is a brand name of screen capture video. Now I can't tell you how much money I've made. I mean millions of dollars using now, I've been using this program in various formats since the year 2000. I mean, almost 19 years straight I've been using this. And you can see an example of it on the web at, here's another site you can check in the show notes, howtoyouseashoppingcart.com, howtoyouseashoppingcart.com. Now, these screen capture videos are where anything you can display on your computer screen, you can capture it and narrate over what they're seeing and then replay it. Uh, the, pro the program is now very sophisticated uh, video program, but 
it's not all that hard to use. You can find Camtasia at techsmith.com. That's T-E-C-H-S-M-I-T-H.com, techsmith.com. Every, everything I mention will be in the show notes. All right, there are other cheaper screen capture video programs out there, and you can search for them, but uh, Camtasia is the gold standard. If, if you want to find others, just Google screen capture video. Now, I use screen capture for training employees given great customer service, but one of the ways I make money is to show people how to do things with cool software and online services, but they can't do them unless they buy the thing I'm talking about. And I get an affiliate commission when they do. I have an entire ebook on this teaching you how to create an online income generator in one hour with no website. Now, I'll have the link to it in the show notes. It's uh, how to create an online income generator in one hour. Yeah, that's the title. I just told you that. All right. Now, let's jump into ebooks as another format. Some of you have heard me talk about ebooks before, but not the way I'm going to talk about it here. There are a lot of new breakthroughs that you need to know about. Now, I'm still not in favor of fancy ebooks on a PC, computer, or Mac that turn the pages and do all kinds of fancy crap. The reason I'm not in favor of them is, is twofold. Because on a PC, many of these ebooks are exe files, .exe. These are the files that people are afraid of because they carry viruses. And the other reason is that many times they just don't work right, which is very frustrating for your visitor or your reader. Still to this day, for most of our ebooks, we use simple Microsoft Word to Adobe Acrobat PDF conversion. That's the way we do it. Now, in ebooks, all the work is done in your Word file or whatever word processor you're using, and then you convert it to PDF. And virtually 98% of everything is done in the Word file. The only thing you do in Adobe is you can put security functions on it and stuff like that if you want. I mean, you can make it so people can't print it or copy and paste and things like that, but I, I very seldom even use those because people will get mad if they, they can't and want their money back. So the main thing I do is I put a password on so they can't change the document or just take my name off and claim the whole thing as their own. Next is Kindle. Now, there are many wild and crazy ebook forms. They're a total waste of time compared to Amazon's Kindle. I mean, this is the big kahuna. Kindle is an, an electronic book reader. And, and if you don't think it's catching on, I was down at Applebee's having dinner. And I see a guy at the bar. He's drinking beer like a fish, and he's got a Kindle reader in front of him. <laughs> uh, hey, and, folks, I've been selling on the web now since there was a commercial web starting around 1994. That's over 24 years. Amazon's Kindle is probably the best opportunity I've seen in all those years because you have access to their hundreds of millions of buyers at Amazon. All right, here's an offbeat one that uh, I, I ran across called cell phone novels. Now, in, in 20 years I've been teaching Internet stuff, I, I would have never in those 20 years recommended it if somebody came to me and they were fiction writers. I would have discouraged them. I would talk them out of joining my mentor program. I would have said, good luck to you. Stephen King couldn't do it. How do you think you're going to do it? All right. Well, times have changed, folks. And as a few years ago, let's say in Japan, the top 10 printed novels started out as what we call cell phone novels. Each one of them sold 400,000 copies just for people to read them on their cell phones. And this is just unbelievable to me. But if, if you're any closet case novelist out there, I want you to go to Google and type in cell phone novels, and you'll find enormous amounts of information on it. Like I said, I would have never recommended people trying to sell fiction, but here we go. It's working. I mean, just type in cell phone novels, and there's another way to sell your stuff. You can, you can also do very well with fiction on Kindle. All right, next is CDs. Now, in certain markets, CDs still sell. The gift and music market is still big, and for older people, I mean, everyone in that age group knows how to shove a CD in the dashboard of their car. 
Now, the recording software to make audio files, which are then burned onto CDs, runs from free to about $65 is all you need. I mean, this is like a nothing investment. Now, I currently use Adobe Audition to record and edit this podcast, which I pay $20 a month to use. I used to use Sony SoundForge Audio Studio. It's now owned by a company called Magic, but I upgraded to uh, Adobe Audition so I could do some more fancier stuff. Now, Audacity is free, and if you're on a Mac, you've already got GarageBand on your computer. Now, you do need a decent microphone. I mean, you can get a studio-quality microphone for under $100, and we buy stuff from the Internet Audio guy, Mike Stewart. The microphone I'm using right now costs about 100 bucks, and hopefully it sounds pretty darn good. Now, if you're recording directly into your computer, you can get a USB studio microphone and plug it right in with that microphone and your software you even if you bought everything it'd be 175 bucks or so you've got a really high quality recording studio for years hey i just did it using the telephone microphone <laughs> so so don't feel discouraged oh i can't spend 175 dollars right now just get any kind of crap microphone but get the software uh, it can be free and get started doing and uh, doing this and practicing because audio sells. All right, transcripts. Now, once you record something, you can take your script, if you have one, and sell it as a transcript. You can also give it away if they buy the audio or vice versa. If they buy the transcript, you can give them the audio. Either way, it works as bonuses. All right, if you didn't have a, a script and you just talk, you can get stuff transcribed. And it used to cost me from $30 to $60 per recorded hour, and it would take me a minimum of one day and usually longer to get it back. <laughs> now, I almost jumped out of my chair when I found a place that did it electronically for only $5 per recorded hour, and it would be back to me within 10 minutes. This is freaking awesome. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll have the link in the show notes where you can get 30 minutes free to try it out and then another 100 minutes free if you sign up. That's, of course, the show notes at screwthecommute.com slash 49 or if you've got our app. And also, I've got a Camtasia video to show you how to use it, and that'll be in the show notes. And there'll be a link there, of course, to get the service. Now, transcripts by themselves, if they're exact transcripts, don't really read very well. But people still like uh, like them and they buy them. But you can probably clean them up a little bit and uh, make them a little nicer and go through it and make sure it reads correctly. All right, audio on the web. Now, the next usage is uh, of audio is when... When you're on the web, you can give away audio files and get people to give you their email address. So you'd say, like, get a free hour-long audio file on XYZ, just fill in your name and email right here, and you'll get it immediately through email. Now, the files won't actually be coming through their email. They're too big. So why do you think I tell them through email? Because if they know that they're going to get instant access, a lot of people will put in crappy or fake email addresses because they know the screen is going to go directly to the download. You want them to think that they have to put their good email address in or they won't get what they want. I don't do that all the time, but it's a good thing to keep in mind if you're getting lots of fake email addresses. All right, the next thing is really cool. It's This is audio that's preloaded on players or iPods or USB thumb drive. People really loved it. I made $53,000 in three days just with this idea. The idea is that you just preload your stuff, your audio files, onto a player or a thumb drive that they can use for something else after they've listened. And you can have your name and logo printed on the device or just use stickers. Love that idea. Okay, repurposing old audio. This is another way to sell your stuff. I just told you I made $53,000 in three days with this idea of selling audios on these preloaded players. Well, where do I get the audio? 
Well, I went back about three or four years through my stuff and pulled out all these roughly 30-minute training sessions I had done in my mentor program and, and other places. I brought out all these files. I had about 70 of them. And I sat down with my laptop and a headset microphone. I didn't even use a studio microphone. And I watched the tennis channel, all right, which has nothing to do with it. And I started listening to these files. This is about two weeks before Christmas. As soon as I would hear something that was obsolete, because, I mean, these files went back two or three years, and who wants to get a three-, four-year-old file on Internet stuff? You know it's going to be old. Well, what I did is I listened to all these files, and some of them were totally obsolete. I threw them out all together, and I ended up with about 60 files. And as soon as I would hear something on a file that was old or had changed, I'd stop the recording. Remember, these are all digital on my laptop. And then I would open up another file, and here's exactly what I did. I'm going to simulate it for you right now. Hi, folks. Is Tom here in the studio. You just heard me say X on this recording. Well, X is no longer the modern way we do things. It's now Y. So if you ever hear me say X again, you know I really mean Y. Okay, let's get back to the live recording. So, so I recorded that little piece and just pasted it right there where I said the obsolete thing. The beauty of this is I was able to promote the product as fully updated to today's standards, okay? Now, if you have anything that changes or you have really old stuff that you love, but there are some things that need fixed, just pop it in. And people didn't even say a word about it because it, it sounds different. Here's Tom in the studio with an update. You know, nobody cares, all right? But now you can fix this stuff just by importing your old CDs and tapes into these software programs and then just fixing the parts that are bad and keeping the rest. That's repurposing old audio. But make sure the audio quality of the old stuff isn't totally crappy before you do this. Or you could just have it transcribed and then re-record it. All right, the next way to sell your stuff is teleclass. This is one of the biggest slam dunk income makers that I've had over many, many years. And uh, you're technically on one right now. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're on it for free, but you can easily sell teleclasses on specific topics. And they're easy to create, and not one person has ever asked me how to dial a telephone. All right. So this is just an enormous amount of money I've made using these things. Now, to do a teleseminar or teleclass, what you need is what is called a telephone bridge line. It's much lower and cheaper technology than a full-blown conference call, but way, way cheaper or free to do. Now, I'm recommending now freeconferencecallhd.com. Freeconferencecallhd.com. It's in the show notes. Now, almost everybody I started out starts at a free place like this. You can record the call, or they will record the call with people listening live, and then Free Conference Call HD will send you the audio recording. All right, it's not going to be quite the quality as recording it yourself because it's you know, over the phone line and everything. But you can do conferences up to a thousand people for free. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, just go and get yourself an account and learn how to use it. Now, of course, I'll have a link in the show notes, episode 49, or on the new app if it's ready by now. And one warning on that, don't jump into a, a big teleconference and promote one not knowing what buttons to push to mute everybody <laughs> and, and all that stuff. Now, audio is great because it's the only medium to this day where people can listen, learn, and be entertained while doing something else. Even though this podcast is, is free, People who have been listening to this podcast have been joining my mentor program and buying my products and all that kind of stuff. And I hope you do too. I mean, uh, it's a my mentor program. It's a unique thing, and it's, other big gurus kind of hate me because of the unique nature of the program that lets you in cheap, and I don't get my big money unless you make money. All of them want all their money up front. So check it out at Great Internet Marketing Training. Dot com. Great internet marketing training. 
www.telecommunicationsoftheheart.com. So teleclasses are very, very powerful ways to get yourself exposed to people so that they trust you and they believe in you. The ones that don't go all the way to buy your big stuff, they still give you smaller amounts of money paying for the teleclass. But I'll tell you, it all adds up. Also, uh, some may say that teleseminars are dead. You hear that all the time. Absolutely not true. For the younger generation especially. The reason is, is they won't sit down to watch a webinar. But they will download a recording of your teleclass and listen to it on their smartphone. All right, speaking of webinars, next thing is webinars. I used to hate webinars, but now I'm a webinar freak and they sell. At TomAntionWebinars.com, I record a live webinar once using GoToWebinar is what I happen to use. And then I replay the heck out of it using the best service of all, replay service. I call it HybridWebinars.com. It'll lead you to another place, and of course, that's my affiliate link. Uh, but I pretty much invented the hybrid webinar. This is where I play the replay but make myself available to answer questions during the replay. This converts the listeners to buyers like crazy because they get the feel of the live event and they get their questions answered immediately. Now, I never pretend it's live, which is unethical. I send out an email announcement saying, webinar replay, and I'll be there answering questions live. And in reality, I could be at the mall answering questions on my smartphone. I mean, one time, Literally, I was leaning up against a tree <laughs> hunting while answering questions from a recorded webinar. <laughs> no wonder I'm such a lousy hunter. <laughs> now, the one thing about webinar people is they're much higher quality because they have uh, taken the time to sit down and put time aside to watch this webinar. They can't be doing it. I mean, yeah, they're probably multitasking a little bit, but it's not like they could be driving a car or exercising. They're watch, uh, they could be exercising too, but they're really a better quality customer that'll spend more money because they are committed to that topic and listening to that webinar. So don't poo-poo webinars either. All right, before we go on, I want to give some shout outs to a couple people that helped me when we originally started Screw the Commute podcast. Rob Hortling uh, at connecttrends.com. Rob says, We connect the latest and most lucrative trends in business for you. This way, you can skip the stuff that doesn't work and concentrate on the things that will make you the most money. Thanks, Rob, for helping me out. Lisa Ryan at lisaryanspeaks.com. She's a keynote speaker, engagement and retention expert, and culture consultant. She wants you to, uh, or she wants to know, do you have actively engaged employees? Well, I don't, I don't really know. Some of them are married. <laughs> anyway, that's Lisa Ryan. Now Claire Dreyer, she's got a blog and video blog. It's called Wow You're Now. It's a baby boomers, boomers guide for travel, adventure, and fun, wowyournow.com, and her goal is to encourage baby boomers to get out and enjoy life. I mean, even if it's local, you don't have to travel for this, you can have lots of fun. So thanks to all of them for helping me get Screw the Commute started. Now, have you ever thought about getting paid to speak and you're not sure if you're ready to invest a lot of money in training? Well, I got the solution. AmazingPublicSpeaking.com has over 475 public and professional speaking techniques. Opening, closing, the tension gaining device, humor, the business of speaking. These are the techniques I still use today. And as far as I know, I, I can't really remember, but I don't think so. I haven't pulled in less than 100,000 at the back of the room in selling in the past 18 years. and you got to be great on stage, and you got to know the business of speaking. So you can get your feet wet and really get going here. It's only 97 bucks for an entire year. I mean, it's a $100,000 education is what it is. You can also check out the complimentary webinar, 30 Speaking Tips in 30.675 Minutes. All right, maybe it's a little longer than that. But uh, all this will be in the show notes, screwthecommute.com slash 49. 
or in our app if it's done by the time you hear this. All right, let's move on to DVDs. I love DVDs, and they have a very high perceived value. Everybody knows how to use them. I mean, it was one of the fastest growing formats on earth. And now you've got Blu-ray and different kinds of formats, but DVDs will be uh, around for a long time. Now, they are harder to create. Now, I was just thinking, if you don't believe me about how they're still going strong, watch people at 7-Eleven in front of one of those Redbox video rental machines. <laughs> all right, They're busy all the time. But my philosophy is just about anybody can learn to shoot video and get decent audio on their video. But it's a lot harder to edit it and burn it on a DVD and all that stuff. So, And when I say a lot harder, it's tremendously harder to learn really good video editing. I don't recommend that for other than simple edits. It's too time-consuming to learn great editing. And you may still suck at it uh, even if you learn how to use the software because there's an art to it. There are tons of highly talented people available everywhere on earth that could edit for you. I've never paid more than $15 an hour for editing. And if you don't think I've had some good ones, uh, <laughs> go to greatinternetmarketingtraining.com, greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. Take a look at our promo video. It's in a little monitor screen. You click on it. Take a look at our promo video for the retreat center there. That video, anywhere you go, would cost you thirty to $50,000 to create the half-hour show. I did it for about $3,000 in editing. It took about 200 hours of editing by a, a film school graduate. And she's just building a resume, and she spent 200 hours editing that thing. And it wouldn't have taken so long if I had been more organized with the shooting of the video, but it wasn't her fault. So I got a $30,000 production for 3000 bucks. Now, we also have a great video class. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, before I tell you about the video class, that video that I just told you about for 3000 bucks is probably responsible for about $6 million in sales so far. All right, so, so uh, video is powerful. But anyway, we've got a, a great video class where I teach uh, once or twice a year, and it's here at the Retreat Center in Virginia Beach. People come in from all over to take this, and I'll have a link to it in the show notes. But uh, uh, you learn all kind. You do learn simple editing on your cell phone because a lot of things we teach is on location that you want to get it up fast and have a real live feel to it. So we teach you simple editing on the cell phone, but I teach you how to uh, make uh, a video that promotes your business anywhere you are. We actually go out into the field and you uh, look around and see what's there and you learn how to make a video that promotes you based on something where you're at. It's really cool. And then we give you all the studio stuff, teach you all the equipment, and all those things. So, really powerful class. And that's at antion.com slash vipvideoday.htm. And it's actually two days now. It's a weekend, basically. antion.com slash vipvideoday.htm. And uh, there you go. So, you do get a lot of money for DVDs, so I would not ignore this market. Okay, printed books. I'm not going to say too much about printed books. This is obviously another way to sell your stuff. I really think you need the self-publishing manual by Dan Pointer. That's P-O-Y-N-T-E-R. Printed books are great credibility builders. But there have been a lot of people out there putting out really schlocky books. I mean, there's still some credibility because you can call yourself an author, but I wouldn't be too proud of the crap that they're putting out. I mean, this doesn't, just doesn't fly in my program when these books are so thin, you can almost see through them. You, you can't even print on the spine and, and people are all proud of them. Well, that doesn't fly well with me. I'm somebody that believes in excellence and putting out crap is not excellent. So don't ask me to teach you how to do that. But if you do put out a decent book, it's a big credibility builder. But you have to decide if you're going to try to self-publish or try to get a major publisher, God help you there, or use print on demand. Uh, I've done all the ways, and for me to go through the major publishing hassle again, I'd rather shoot myself in the head unless there was an enormous amount of money on the table before I'd ever mess with it. Because it was just a big hassle. They didn't know what they were doing. And, and they're a big, major publishing company. And 
And you say, well, who are you to say a major publishing company doesn't know what they're doing? Well, they've been around for 50 or 100 years. But from my point of view, from making money and marketing a book, they're clueless. All right. I prefer self-publishing. And Dan Pointer, may he rest in peace, is the main guru. And I've had many versions of his books for the past 20 versions of them. But uh, everything I do has his influence in it. So I can't recommend him enough. Uh, get the self-publishing manual. All right, the next thing is special reports. I mean, one of my favorite students, her name is Joan Stewart, the publicity hound, refuses to write a book. Her book would sell for about 24 bucks. That's what books sell for, right? The same information in her book breaks down into 43 special reports where she gets anywhere from $18 to $39 for them, all right? So she gets $800 for the same information. She would only get $24 if she put it all in one place. So check her out at publicityhound.com, publicityhound.com. And I know this is real because I paid as much as $180 for a 30-page report. I really needed to know some things about the state of the email union and publishing and open rate averages and stuff like that. The company out of DC called Marketing Sherpa sells these very expensive reports. Now, to a big company, it's a drop in the bucket. They, they don't even think twice about dropping 180 bucks on some executive summary report. So if you have stuff that lends itself to that, forget the book and write special reports and sell it. All right, the next thing is CEU credit. And for those of you who don't know, that stands for continuing education. The continuing education is beautiful, even in today's economy, because uh, they have to have continuing education to keep their license, like lawyers, doctors, uh, cosmetologists, CPAs, all those kinds of people, nurses. And there are loads of places that have CEUs, but these people uh, don't give up their license. You know, what I'm trying to tell you is that if the economy's bad and even if they're out of work, they can't give up their license, so they have to keep it up. Uh, and even if the economy is rough, they have to buy CEU credit. So they have to go and buy this training. So I know a guy that first recruited me into the D.C. Speakers Association. He's been selling them forever. And back in those days, this back in 1991, he was selling some little workbook for 90 bucks, and his market had to buy it. Now, this is a beautiful thing. The first thing you'd want to do is, in your state, uh, because it's a state-by-state -state thing, type into Google Licensing Board and then put your state and profession. So licensing board, CPAs, or something like that, and just you'll see what comes up. I typed in licensing board Virginia, and I found in about 30 seconds what I needed to learn. Uh, I just tried it before we started. Uh, I started this podcast, typed in licensing board Texas. I don't know why I put Texas. And in about five seconds, the first place was what I needed to find out about who needs CEOs in Texas for electricians and all these other professions and contractors. And things. All right, next topic is sell co-authorships. This is a very cool thing. You do the work putting a book together and charge people to be a co-author of your book. All they have to do is write sections of the book. They pay you for the privilege of being a co-author with you, and they get out of all the other hassle of developing the book. The bigger your name is, the more you can charge. And just be careful with this idea that the person isn't a scammer or some kind of person who you would be embarrassed to be a co-author. All right, anthologies. Now, this is another form of co-authorship. But instead of one person co-authoring, you have many people co-author. They pay you to be in the book. They write one chapter and get a certain number of books included in their fee. You have the book printed and distributed to, auth to the authors, and you keep the profits from all their fees over and above the printing costs and so forth. All right, the next thing is live seminars. This can be extremely lucrative, but they can also be extremely risky, and they're always a lot of work. I never did any of my own until I got a large database because it took out all the marketing costs, which made it less risky. So if I want to throw a live seminar now, I just hit a few buttons, 100,000 people hear of it, and I can pretty much fill up a seminar in any state of the United States. 
Now, I don't do big seminars because I can't stand the logistics, so I don't even need a meeting plan. But anyway, doing it uh, with your own email and your own marketing knocks out a lot of the risk. Now, I did one big event, and the one thing I learned along the way is to get a meeting plan. Good ones will save you far more than they'll ever cost you, and here's the reason. They have clout with hotels. I usually call hotel people scumbags. Sorry if you're a hotel person listening to this, but uh, because a lot of the stuff, it's, it's a pretty rotten profession. They'll screw you every which way they can screw you, and you probably won't know what's happening or what hits you until it's too late. Where do you get the bill for the coffee? that you thought was one price, and it's going to be 10 times that by the time you're done. All right. A good meeting planner won't let that happen to you. So I recommend Audrey Hagen at Platinum Events. She does all the major players because she's just excellent. She takes care of every detail and makes the best deal. Now, there's lots of books out there also on running seminars. So if you want to uh, give live seminars, they're a little bit risky, but they can be very lucrative. All right, coaching and mentor programs. I really don't like the word coach. And again, there's probably coaches listening to this. I don't want to step on your toes. Just hear me out. I think it's uh, the term coach has been bastardized by all these supposed life coaches. I mean, I crack up so, so much on this. I don't want to embarrass people when they say, I'm a certified life coach. And then I check in, check on them, and they see they haven't done a darn thing in their entire life. <laughs> But they're certified, yeah, to help me learn how to run my life. <laughs> well, there's too much of that going on nowadays. There's, there's not much regulation on it or any, and you have to be very careful. It's funny because they begged me to speak at, at this coaching seminar one time, and I told them ahead of time what I just told you, and they still wanted me there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there are a lot of serious good coaches. But what I'm saying to you is that term, even though you're a good coach, doesn't mean that you're not going to suffer a little bit by using that term to call yourself a coach because of all these other lowlifes that are out there driving broken down Hyundais and they can't pay their rent, but they're going to be your life coach. So I prefer the term mentor. Mentor is a, a much higher level type of person. It's like a trusted advisor. I believe that's a better term, and, and you'll be held in much higher esteem. That's why I have a mentor program. And whatever you call yourself, though, people will pay for personal attention. This is where you can be one-on-one, -on, -one, on the phone, or Skype, or Zoom. Um, you, you can be one-on-many, -on -many too. You, you can have personal visits. The beauty of it is you can set up any way you want. People pay you by the hour, they can pay you monthly, they can pay you yearly. Mine is an upfront fee and then a percentage of their net profits that's capped so they're not stuck with me forever. It's totally fair and it's why one of the longest running, most successful mentor programs ever. Now, I've got myself to the point where it's just not worth it for me to help somebody for a year if I don't have a chance of making a lot of money. So here's how I set mine up and you pay an entry fee plus a percentage of your net profits. And I say net because you have to make money before I get any percentage. And that it's up to a cap because I don't want to get married to you and I don't want you to feel like you're stuck with me forever. And my program is a year long because it's going to take me a year to train you. You're either crazy or naive if you think you can learn what I know in a few-week program. Anyway, that's how I've structured my program. I, mean, I started out at $250 a month, I think it was a long time ago. Over the past 18 years, I've got it up to about an $8,000 to get in, and we even finance that for you. And then $50,000 on the back end. and You've got everything at your fingertips by somebody that has really done it. And people love this. They're thinking, absolutely, I'm glad to give you $50,000 if I made $200,000, and now I'm an expert online marketer. Sure, they, that's why they love it. A lot of the other gurus are mad because they want to charge you that much up front, and then they have no built-in incentive to still working for you. They could care less if you're successful. They got a 50 or 100 grand up front from you. Okay? So the bottom line in my program is you get personal one-on-one -on -one attention from me and my staff, and you could do the same thing for your program. Now, 
if your program isn't financially related, there's no measurement of income, well, then the percentage deal might not work for you. But at any rate, you can give personal or group attention to people and get a lot of money for it. So check out my program at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com, greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. Of course, that's going to be in the show notes. This is episode 4949. All right, the next thing you might not have thought of is TV shows. Uh, the same people you recruit for doing your DVDs can help you create a TV show. Or you can just pitch a TV show to a production company, and if they like it, they'll provide the production crew for you and try to sell it to the networks or cable. And you know, I have a show in development in Hollywood now. And we did all the stuff. We shot all the sizzle reels and all, all the stuff. But the, they told me, Tom, we love the show, but don't quit your day job. <laughs> they told me it has about a 40% chance of selling on cable and only 5% on network. But anyway, if you're not that ambitious to go that route, you can do a lot of web TV stuff now. Oh, and by the way, uh, you can see the the sizzle reel at scambrigade.com. That's it's a consumer advocate show. Scambrigade.com will have it in the show notes. Okay, so you can sell your knowledge in TV shows, but look at all these cable places. Uh, how did Bob Vila get started? I mean, he had an expertise. He turned it into a show by getting sponsors like Home Depots and Lowe's, Corning, and all those places that make building materials. So you got to think, who would want to sponsor a show like you have? If you find the sponsors and you put together a decent show, it's going to get on the air pretty much because if you come with the money, which is from these big sponsors, as long as it's a legitimate looking show, they'll love you because you're bringing the money to the table. Now, now there's a note here. You have to be careful that your sponsors are not competitive with potential advertisers of the show because they don't really like that. So anyway, uh, I got myself an agent and uh, got a production company and uh, crossing my fingers that the show sells. Okay, and if you have any connections in those uh, fields, uh, I'd love to hear about it. All right, spokesperson work. I was the chief spokesperson for CBS-owned Switchboard.com, which was one of the largest websites in the world. I think it was probably the easiest money I ever made. It was $100,000 part-time for three months. And I only left the house six times, and I went to five different cities, and I did the exact same speech each time. See, most of the time, I'm very customized. But this was exactly the same speech <laughs> uh, every time, and it was so much easier. Now, spokesperson stuff can be very lucrative. You can do trade shows and other industry events, and most of the time, you just say the same thing each place. All right, schools. So next thing... Uh, well, of course, this is what I'm, I'm doing with my distance learning facility. That's imtcva.org. Uh, whenever I talk about my school, I highly encourage people to watch the free webinar I produce called Is Higher Education Really Worth It? You find it at screwthecommute.com and then click on webinar or free webinar. Now, if you, if you want retrained or you have kids or neighbors thinking about going to college, please watch this. It could literally save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right, anyway, back to starting a school. Oh, the big thing here is you have to be able to navigate through all the red tape. That's why I got a professor with a PhD who has spoken on boards of directors of schools. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, I don't speak their language. Now, there are schools on all kinds of topics. I mean, there's a place called T-Touch, T-Touch.com. That's the letter T. And then the word touch, T-touch. So there's two T's at the beginning. It teaches you how to massage horses, <laughs> okay? It's a six, it's got six eight-day sessions. I guess that's six weeks or so at their ranch for 5,000 bucks. And that's, this is whenever I looked at this a long time ago. Keep in mind, I heard about this in 1999. And this is, and it's still uh, open 19 years later. It's still in business. But not to be outdone, there's a website called Equisage. They're the same thing about massaging horses and dogs. All right. last, the last I heard, it was $1,795 for a week. Or if you want one-on-one -on -one with the owner, it's $3,000 for a week. 
And you'd be amazed at all the kinds of schools you could start. There's watch repair, hypnosis, every kind of goofball therapy you can imagine. And let's go back to horses. <laughs> There's a horse management school. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> if that's managing their eating and poop schedules or <laughs> I have no idea what that means. All right, basically what I'm telling you is you can start a school on whatever you do and really legitimize it. But my, <laughs> my favorite one was the International Professional Sex Surrogates Association. <laughs> and I had a sex surrogate in my program, in my mentor program. So this is really a real profession. And <laughs> this is a quote from their advertising. The association offers a professional sex surrogate training course that combines <laughs> experiential exercises, lectures, and reading assignments. I wonder what the reading assignments are. <laughs> Individual counseling and group process. <laughs> I don't know what that means either. Uh, along with daily journaling, the training ends with an internship where students are placed with experienced therapists for additional hours of consultation and supervision. <laughs> Can you imagine? You're trained to be a sex servant. Surrogate, you're on the job, and your instructor's there telling you, "Hey, don't do it that way. Do it this way." And the poor, the poor, most probably a guy. The poor guy is like, "Oh man, I think I'll be celibate." Oh man, I don't know if I could make it through this course. Sixty hours in twelve weeks. I might be able to handle the sixty hours in twelve weeks, but they have a a ten day intensive. There's no way I could make it through that course. <laughs> oh, boy. And of course, I, I'm laughing like crazy, but this is a real profession. I'm sure it does some real good for people. <laughs> but anyway, there's all kinds of schools you could start. Oh, man. All right, training courses. The next thing is, is write and license training courses for royalty. One way would be to write a course, uh, write course materials that a company that licensed the training course from you, and then they duplicate and deliver the course themselves. Hey, you could always throw in a train the trainer class, which you charge for, because if you make a course, you want to make sure that it's delivered properly. And as part of your deal, you could train their trainers for money, so you get paid for that, you get paid for the course materials, and you get paid royalties. Now, I don't claim to be an intellectual property attorney, so I don't know the amounts of money you can get for this kind of material, but in the corporate market, it can be substantial. You might want to get an, an intellectual property attorney who's been through licensing of these kinds of things. See, some attorneys might only have experience licensing music, let's say, and, and they would be clueless about course material. So find somebody good that's already done it. Another thing to license, and this is kind of cool, is tip of the day licensing. So let's say you wrote 365 tips on your topic. Maybe it's time management or customer service, whatever it is. You can have a program or make a file that you could license to a company where they distribute it to all their computers every day. So a tip comes up on the screen that you've provided. This happens all the time. Now, these are inexpensive uh, to companies that license these things. But to you, it could be a heck of a lot of money. I mean, when you license it, and maybe they're going to put it on 5,000 or 10,000 computers around their company, that will be big bucks for you. Another kind of licensing is a little bit different from the sponsorship that I got. I'm talking about sponsorship of your materials, like books and training materials. This is where a company would pay to be involved or included in your book. The way to land these kinds of deals is you have to think, okay, who would want to be in front of my audience that I speak to? If, if you happen to speak to cancer patients, maybe a company that makes prosthetics. Uh, I'm not even sure that if that's the term for artificial limbs and bras and things like that. Maybe they would want to sponsor. You got to think, who would want to be in front of my audience? Now, I used to know, I, I can't remember this lady's name, but she spoke about soybeans. or the. She was basically speaking about health, but um, 
And I know there's controversy about whether soy is any good. I don't really know about that. But I don't care. That's She had nine different people paying her money every time she spoke because she had sponsors, and they were non-competitive. They all made soy-based products. Okay? Uh, now, the more books you distribute, the more people you speak to, the higher your sponsorship fee goes. The other way to license is to get training companies to use your course or sell your courses to training companies looking for new topics like Skill Path or National Seminar. Now, these kinds of places sometimes buy course materials. Uh, and another way is curriculum for colleges. I mean, you say, I never heard of that. People buying curriculum? Yes. They have to get it somewhere. One of my options, uh, instead of doing this school on my own, was to tie it up with a major university because they're all looking for additional revenue streams. So if you can bring them a course, they'll put it in their catalog as long as everybody's happy and you suit the powers that be, but they'll name your course in their catalog. And that's another way is to make curriculums and maybe you'd even be the teacher and get paid for that. I can't remember the school, but I, I know somebody for a long time was using my book, Wake Em Up Business Presentations, in their public speaking course. So every semester, they would order a bunch of a case of books or a couple cases of books. I can mem can't remember where it was, but those are all ways to license and use curriculum and sell training. All right, membership sites. I happen to have several. I have greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. That's the site for my mentor program. I have amazingpublicspeaking.com. That's the largest public speaking site in the world. It's, yeah, it's our sponsor for this episode. It's got 400, more than 475 videos and audios and PDF files and all that stuff. I've got copywriting901.com, which is an excellent education in writing words that sell, which, by the way, is the number one business skill I claim in my entire business career. We got brutalselfdefense.com is a membership site that has 14 hours of some of the most brutal ways to defend yourself. I even have a paid private Facebook group called what else? Screw the commute. The link uh, to it is at screwthecommute.com/facebook. And haven't you joined yet? I'm not getting any younger over here, folks. <laughs> anyway, I'll have all those in the show notes. Those are membership sites. I use Wishlist Member for inexpensive membership software. Of course, my affiliate link will be in the show notes for that. And for really important stuff like my mentor program, I use MemberGate. Now, let me tell you about membership sites. I wrote an article one time called, When Does 20 Equal 24,000? The answer is, is that if you had as little as 100 members at 20 bucks a piece, and by the way, 100 by internet standards on anything is about as pitiful as it gets. Okay, but if you had 100 members at $20 a piece per month, that's $2,000 a month times 12 is $24,000 a year cash flow you just created at the worst possible performance level you could imagine. <laughs> what if you had 200 members? You just exceeded the average income of a person in the USA. 300, 400, 500, 1,000 members. If you do a really good job at it, some people are making $200,000 a month on this. I know personally I was spending $80 a month on four different tennis sites. And if I don't get a chance to visit one of the sites during the month, they still get my $20. And I don't complain. It's not their fault I was too busy. So membership sites are a great thing to get into. Also, it builds community. I mean, once you get what we call a critical mass, the, of people. The people never want to quit because they've made friends in there because you have discussion boards in there where they're kicking around issues and ideas all the time. And Once you get to that critical mass worth of people, you're sitting really pretty with a membership site. Our next thing is combo products. This is taking all the stuff I just told you and putting it together in different combinations. You really have no additional work other than to rewrite your sales letter a little bit by taking little things and putting them into different things. And we do this on eBay all the time. We have the great internet marketing package, and we've got the great public speaking package, which is just a hodgepodge of stuff all about that topic, and it 
brings in leads off of eBay and brings in decent money too. But the money isn't as important as the leads that we bring in off of eBay. So you can just repackage things and put it in different order and you'll have no additional work, but you have a bunch of new different products. That's combo products. All right, translation. Now, once you get done with all this stuff I'm telling you, the last thing I have for you on this podcast is to translate it into other languages. This is how you tap the lucrative foreign market. Now, you don't use one of these free translator things online because it's probably going to say something really stupid and you're going to look like an idiot to that market. You can find quality translation service by Googling them, or, or you can find good people on Craigslist. So what do you do with the sales page or complete website you've translated? Well, there's a search engine called Search Engine Colossus, and I can never remember how to spell that. <laughs> so Colossus, so uh, we'll have it in the show notes. But this is a search engine of foreign search engines. All the search engines, the major ones in every country around the world, are listed there. And you don't have to submit an entire website to most search engines. If you want to get a page of yours accepted in a Mexican search engine, you write it in Spanish and just submit that page to the search engine. And uh, these, there's lots of search engines out there, uh, but they aren't nearly as crowded as the ones in the USA. And of course, Google's going to have a presence in all these countries too. So. Uh, so that's translation. And last but not least, we got podcasting. We can't leave out podcasting. Uh, podcasts are free, but there are many people bringing in $100,000 a month or more by selling their own products and services, getting sponsorships, and using affiliate links. I mean, uh, some even charge many of their guests to be on. Now, Screw the Commute made about $10,000 in its first week simply by stimulating sales. I admit it was the first week mostly from people that already knew me. But now I was reaching them in a different way besides email, which, again, is a form of repurposing, which is what this episode is all about. And podcast has really taken off, and the listenership has exceeded satellite radio. Even new cars are coming podcast ready. and. Don't forget Amazon's Echo and Alexa in the homes. They're podcast ready too. So here we go. I don't know how many ways I gave you to sell your knowledge, but I know I gave you plenty enough to make a fortune for you so, so that you can screw the commute. So, hey, why don't you think about joining my mentor program so I can work with you one-on-one, -on -one, so I can really help you screw the commute. Check it out at greatinternetmarketing.com. Go out and repurpose your stuff for fun and profit. I can't wait to hear those ka-chings coming from your computer. Now, get your subscription also to Amazing Public Speaking. It'll help in your business presentations, keynote speeches, and all your communication. That's AmazingPublicSpeaking.com. And please subscribe and review. Uh, if you're new to podcasts, we've got instructions on how to do it at ScrewTheCommute.com slash 49. That's the show notes. Or... Uh, maybe we'll be able to fit that in the app when we get it going. Now, next episode, episode 50, is Roberto Candelaria. With, uh, he's a sponsorship expert. He's going to tell you how to get big companies to finance your dream. And guess what? You don't have to pay it back. And you don't have to be some big celebrity to get them to do it. You just need to know how, what to say, and how to present yourself. He's going uh, to show you in episode 50. All right, folks, 